Earlier this month, a bill passed through the House of Representatives Financial Services Committee that created a massive loophole for big banks. A loophole which will likely allow banks to engage in some of the same kinds of derivatives trading that sparked the financial meltdown of 2008. Now, who on earth would write a piece of legislation that would allow the big banks to run wild again? Well, the banks would, of course. And who would pass such a bill? Well, lawmakers who let the banks write their legislation. According to emails reviewed by the New York Times, Citigroup's recommendations were reflected in more than 70 lines of the House Committee's 85-line bill. Two crucial paragraphs prepared by Citigroup in conjunction with other Wall Street banks were copied nearly word for word. Lawmakers changed two words to make them plural. That's why we have lawmakers, to make sure that all of the pluralities are in agreement. Now, keep in mind, this is the same committee whose chairman, Republican Jeb Henserling of Texas, went on a ski vacation with banking executives just six weeks after he took over committee leadership. But it wasn't just the 31 Republicans on the committee who voted for the bill. It was Democrats, too. It passed 53 to 6. And while some more senior Democrats on the committee, like Maxine Waters, voted against the bill, all seven freshman Democrats voted yes. And if you are wondering why Democrats would vote for this bank-written deregulatory piece of legislation, one answer might plausibly be found in a trip many of them took to New York just six days after they voted for the bill. This picture, posted on Congresswoman Beatty's website, shows several members of the Democratic freshman class posing at the Freedom Tower. On that same trip, they were treated to, according to the New York Times, a tour of Goldman's Lower Manhattan headquarters and a meeting with Lloyd C. Blankfein, the bank's chief executive. The lawmakers went to J.P. Morgan's Park Avenue office. There they chatted with Jamie Dimon, the bank's chief, about Dodd-Frank and immigration reform. The trip, which was not a fundraiser, was organized in part to introduce the freshman class to the Wall Street elites that they hope will one day fund their campaigns. The very same Wall Street elites that the House Financial Services Committee is allowing to blow up Dodd-Frank with plenty of help from the Democrats' freshman class of 2013. Joining me tonight, former New York governor and former New York attorney general, Elliot Spitzer. Uh, Elliot, the House Financial Services right. Committee, uh, they, I have covered them before. You've had some run-ins with them. Indeed I have. This is not the most shocking thing. No, I mean, in fact, this is par for the course. I mean, what's beautiful about this is with the emails, you actually <laughs> see it. There's a deg degree of transparency here yes. that is wonderful. I mean, they're now grammarians. I mean, the, the committee is <laughs> correcting grammar, not, made, not passing substantive laws. You know, I got to tell you this quick vignette. Back when I was attorney general and we were making cases against Wall Street, the House Financial Services Committee passed a bill written by Morgan Stanley that did one thing and one thing only, take away jurisdiction from my office to oversee the banks. They did, this wasn't even a substantive bill saying we want to do X, Y, or Z. It was just get this guy out of our turf. So this is par for the course. It was written by Morgan Stanley, passed by House Financial Services. This is insane. So here's, insane. here's, here's, uh, yeah. here's Citigroup's response to the New York Times piece. Citi has taken on a lead role in working with our peers and members of Congress to find a common sense solution. They, they don't like this right. regulation. The result of this collaboration, I love that word, the result of word. this collaboration is legislating, outlining a more straightforward and simplified approach to derivatives transactions, and then this, uh, right. a little more... Uh, no, no, but they're right. This is a good thing because we had so much fun in 2008 and 2009 in the financial crisis when all our tax dollars went to bail them out. They want to do it over again. And we should, and be, this and, is, and we should be clear, the thing that really blew it all up... Was derivatives. Was derivatives, and they were and, being traded out of one well, office in London at AIG. That, yes. The thing that really took it from... You know, a forest fire to, like, this threatens the world was that. Yes, and, and that's what they want to deregulate once again. So it because makes they make you, so much money on they, it. They, it makes you wonder how short is our memory that we can, a mere six years later, five years later, say we want to go back to permitting them to do it in the opaque world of the black boxes without any transparency. But, it's but insane. Op opacity is precisely the issue here yeah. because um, this is tough technical stuff. We sat yes. around at editorial meeting this morning. We thought, man, how in the weeds of Revenues we're getting at. We're trying to like keep this accessible to folks, and you have now the banks are doing a full spectrum assault on Dodd Frank. Yes. They are suing. They're doing it in the courts. They're doing it with the regulators, and they're doing it in Congress. They don't want the regulations to be issued, so they bottle that process up in the courts, appealing, 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 and then on, in Congress they try to repeal it. But I think there's an answer, and here's what it is: Congressmen, Congresswomen love to put their names on bills. From now on, any amendment or legislation that is written 
let's say half of it or more by a bank. We don't call it the Smith-Jones bill. We call it the Goldman Sachs <laughs> Citibank deregulatory bill. And take the congressman names off it. So I like that it. idea. At least let's know who's written this I, thing. I like not William Shakespeare's Hamlet. It's the Citibank deregulatory <laughs> bill. You know, put the name of the real author well, on it. And I love this quote in the Times piece. This is from Congressman Jim Hines, who supported the bill, leads fundraising in the House. He's on financial services, is a former Goldman banker. Right. And he says, I won't dispute for one second the problems of a system that demands immense amount of fundraisers by its legislators. It's appalling. It's disgusting. It's wasteful. It opens the possibility of conflicts of interest and corruption. It's unfortunately the world we live in. Look, Incredibly he, but he, but he, honest. And, but he's good. He, he lived at Goldman. He, he understands conflicts. He right. understands how, as, as one of the bankers <laughs> said to me, what used to be a conflict of interest is now a synergy. They rationalize it so they walk right into the middle of it and enjoy it. It, it is a perverse world. I'm glad you made the point, though. Both parties are playing this game. Right. We can't pretend to be sanctimonious on this. No, and I think uh, one of the things institutionally about the House Financial Services Committee is it is it's reputation washing it's a huge committee and the reason it's a huge committee is it's a great place to raise money right. out of and both parties what they do is they take a freshman who's going to have a really tough reelect Kirsten yep. Cinema who voted for this bill who's in Arizona and I like her a lot I've had her on the right. show she's going to have a really tough reelect she's in a, like a 50-50 district right. she gets put on that committee so she can raise the money to run that tough reelect and you're you have been put on this committee told you're on this committee to raise money how are you supposed to go about doing your job in a way that that doesn't stalk you the but whole time isn't it amazing that you take these freshmen, just elected Congress, they come to New York, they want to see the Freedom Tower, that's great, but they meet with Lloyd Blankfein and Jamie Dimon, who just a mere few years ago were leading institutions that took us to the precipice, who didn't have the judgment to understand that the system of deregulatory finance that they created is what destroyed our economy and the middle class, and now they're given the deference and the respect as yep. though it never happened. That is what appalls me most. The word collaboration in this statement, I was thinking about today because we are talking about the Vitter Amendment. I think it would be nice if food stamp recipients could collaborate effectively yeah. with Congress in the same way. Yep. There's a lot of people, yep. like, ex-felons, yep. I think, would be, would really, I think Congress <laughs> would benefit from, from, from not constraining their collaboration yeah. so narrowly yeah. to Wall Street bankers. That's exactly right. You know, it is, it's a shame, and to see us repeating history at warp speed is just appalling. Uh, former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer, thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You too. An ordinary citizen who looked terror in the face and refused to succumb to the fear that terrorism feeds upon. Amazing. It's coming up.